Hello and welcome to our tutorial on astrophotography. My name is Mark Nicholas and I'm coming to you from Los Angeles where the sky is way too bright all night. Now this is a tutorial for the average person, for the non-scientist. Now there are many reasons why people engage in astrophotography. And one thing is for sure, as complicated as it can be, it is fair to say that practically anyone can do it. I, for instance, decided to start astrophotography just to bring those little gray things I saw in my telescope a little bit closer, to add some color, to make them real. And astrophotography is the way to do that. Now today, instead of talking about technique, we're going to talk about our two biggest myths, magnification and accessibility. And in short, magnification and accessibility is another way of saying anyone can do it and you don't need a lot of equipment. Let's get started. Now in order to engage in astrophotography, what do you need? Well, in short, you need a sky, because in the beginning, astrophotography is just a camera and a sky. And I wanted to show you these four photos to get you started. Here's a moon over Los Angeles. Here's a moon. Here's an aurora. And here are star trails. Now these four photos have one thing in common. They are all shot off of a tripod with a regular camera. The magnification myth is that many photographs require no magnification whatsoever. For instance, here's a photograph of the Milky Way. This is not only shot wider than we see, this is shot at 11 millimeters. And this is how amazing the sky is because the entire sky is filled up of incredible objects to see. Here's a shot of the Milky Way, which we're going to come back to in a little bit, shot at 28 millimeters. This again is shot wider than our eyes can see. It's taking up a very large portion of the sky, but it's more magnified than the 11 millimeter shot we just took. Here's a photograph of me in the desert. This is shot at 28 millimeters, the same focal length as the Milky Way was shot a moment ago. Here's another shot of the Milky Way. We like these shots of the Milky Way because they give us an example of how large things are up in the sky. We're going to get back to this photo again, but here you see the little truck and one of my colleagues, Ken, doing his own astrophotography, and you can see how really tiny he is. But now, let's get back to our 28 millimeter shot. And let's take a piece of this shot, taken the same day. Here's a shot at 75 millimeters. All of a sudden, you can see some nebulas, you could see all kinds of things. And here's a shot taken at 200 millimeters. And all of a sudden, the Eagle Nebula becomes plain as day. Here's another shot of me at 28 millimeters to give you an idea about scale. Here's a shot taken at 28 millimeters. Look at this. You can see the entire Cygnus portion of the sky. And I know that one of the reasons why you're here is because you want to see those faraway things. Well, Let's start with the Andromeda Galaxy. Here's a shot of the Aurora, taken with a wide-angle lens. Do you see that little smudge up there? With a wide-angle lens, that's the Andromeda Galaxy. And the thing about the Andromeda Galaxy it is, is that it is actually about eight times the size of the full moon. The only problem is you can't see it because it's a little dim. That's where astrophotography comes in. Here's a shot of the Andromeda Galaxy, taken at 300 millimeters. Look at this, it almost fills the entire frame. Here's another shot of the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, you'll notice when I say 300 millimeters, we're still talking about camera lens distances. We're not talking about a telescope. Now, here's a shot taken about at about 150 millimeters in focal length. Look at all the red, all the stars. It takes up the entire, the entire frame of the photograph. What is up in the sky is massive. Here's the, the bottom of the pelican. You can see a little bit of the uh, a bit, a little bit of the North American nebula. This is huge. Here's a shot of 200 millimeters in the Veil Nebula. You can see the entire the entire thing. It fills the frame. Most astrophotographers can actually find almost an unlimited number of subjects less than a thousand millimeters in distance. Here's a shot taken at 900 millimeters. This is the Lagoon Nebula. This is off of my primary refractor. And you can see it's almost too big for the photograph. Here's a shot of the Orion, the Great Orion Nebula. And once again, it fills the entire frame. Most people like to shoot this 
at a smaller, at, a, at, a, at less of a focal length, because you miss the Running Man Nebula just above it. And there's so much nebulosity here that you actually want to see more. And the average telescope is simply too close. And so we're left with the most important question, which is what do you need to do this? A camera, of course, a tripod, a nice lens, nothing too fancy. As a matter of fact, here are a series of photographs taken without any additional equipment. Here's a photograph of some star trails. For this, I used a bulb control. It just leaves the shutter open. And I left the shutter open for 10 minutes on a regular tripod, and I aimed the camera at the North Star. Here's a photograph taken at 40 seconds off of a tripod. Nothing fancy here, just a tripod, a camera, a nice fast lens taken at an aperture of 2.8. And then I made some adjustments in Photoshop to just bring out a little bit of the color. Now here's another photograph taken at 30 seconds. The Milky Way once again, a little bit wider. The reason why I don't have as much light here is because of this particular lens, my wider lens, does not shoot as fast. It has a smaller aperture. With less of an aperture, I get less light. Here is one more photo taken over 50 seconds. The stars are starting to drag a bit, but there's an awful lot of character to this photograph. And lastly, here is a photograph taken of the Andromeda Galaxy at 75 millimeters. This is the focal length that you would shoot on any day-to-day -day excursion around town. Now, of course, you can pop the camera onto an equatorial mount which is simply a mount that rotates with the Earth. And you can take longer photographs, and you can capture more of that light over a much longer period of time. But you don't need to start this way. You can end this way. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is tutorial number one. Tutorial number two is we will begin to explore a little bit of the technique in capturing more of our heaven's light. Until next time.